Hello. I have with me today someone who uh, used to be a member of the Green Party, is currently on suspension for reasons that we'll go into. Um, this is Andy Healy, who I followed for uh, a, a good long time on Twitter before I was uh, booted off. Um, Andy has is gets into the same kind of trouble as I do and runs into the same kinds of people as I do. We're about to speak about uh, one of those people now, but also uh, more generally about Andy and uh, his position in this debate. Andy, hello. How are you doing? Hi, Greg. Yes, fine. Thanks. Yeah. Good, good. Um, can you give me a little bit of a, a background first, uh, how you became involved in the Green Party and in green politics, and, and uh, uh, we'll take it from there. Well, I guess I've been involved, you know, as, as a Green, I was involved in Green Party activism in, you know, since my early 20s, I guess, um, and I've, I've sort of voted Green most of my life. I got interested in uh, the Green Party in 2015. I went along as an observer to the, one of the conferences uh, doing some childcare for some friends, and I thought this seems very sensible. Uh, and then later that year, I discovered what was going on with the gender identity movement, and thought I'd look at the Green Party and see what the policies were. And I thought, well, I can't basically vote for the Green Party while these sort of policies are in place. So, yes, uh, yes. I, I joined partly to, to try and uh, to challenge some of the policies that were that were getting pushed through. What were the what were the policies that were getting th uh, pushed through that were worrying you? I, I guess it was particularly the one to do with with the with the um, trans transitioning of children and what children were being taught about being born in the wrong body, uh, children being put on a on a medical pathway for life, uh, and the fact that these issues weren't allowed to be discussed because that um, uh, they were regarded as being transphobic and the way the use of, the, of people being described as turf to shut down debate. And I was aware that most a lot of the women I knew had similar views but were very. Um, you know, were being bullied into silence. Really, were worried about their, you know, jobs and careers. Uh, and I decided I, I could, you know, I was able to put myself forward. Really, you know, in my own, uh, there wasn't much they could do to me. That's what I thought. Really, when you say people were being called transphobic and and turf and so on, uh, you had an early run in with uh, the person who this, um, I guess, podcast will be mainly about, uh, which is a certain Amy Challoner. Is that right? Uh, yes, I mean, I started looking into who was pushing the policies in the Green Party, uh, and I looked at who was the equality officer, which was Amy Challoner, uh, and I went to look at Amy's Twitter feed, and um, the first tweet I saw was one saying, notice to rise in turfs attacking Green Party members and activists, uh, the Greens are proud of our diversity and stick up for our trans members. So I sort of challenged Amy over that, saying that, you know, that many members had issues with the ideology and using such misogynistic slurs just served to shut down debate. Um, we had a short, you know, reasonably uh, unabusive uh, conversation on Twitter. Then uh, Amy blocked me and then um, called me several abusive names on Amy's own Twitter account, uh, other yeah. Twitter account. And they then followed, I guess there was another, a, a year basically where um, I think someone, Amy, uh, somebody complained to the Green Party and Amy made a sort of apology. But I basically spent the next year then trying to raise some of the issues to do with safeguarding. There was talk about, of uh, reviewing the GRA uh, in that uh, 2016, 2017. So I spent a year of trying to raise the issues in the party and how, you know, use of the word turf was just, as you know, it was a starting point really for stopping any debate. March 2017, I guess, was when things uh, took a different direction, I guess, when I, I sort of criticised Amy Charles part of that was featured on the Green Party's International Women's Day tweet. And I sort of answered it with some screenshots of uh, Amy calling women turf swerfs and things. Yes, it's, and, it's particularly galling when people take a woman's place when they seem to hate women. <laughs> that's, well, that's sort of... I mean, I guess my initial reaction was someone who was so blatantly, you know, shutting down debate, had to, had some really off the wall ideas about, about transitioning children and was making, you know, so obviously anti-woman. I thought that um, once this was came to notice in the Green Party that... Um, Amy would be severely censured and we'd have some debate about it, but it didn't happen that way, I guess. This is similar to what happened when uh, similar um, accusations were put to Stonewall, where Amy remained on the trans advisory board. Uh, and I'm fairly, I'm quite proud of this fact, actually, uh, until a couple of days after I wrote a piece uh, exposing Amy in, in um, Feminist Current. Uh, but let's not skip ahead. Let's let's go with what happened to you next 
Uh, so, right. so you became you were censured by the Green Party, is that right? Well, what well, I, I sort of we had a an arc sort of several discussions on Twitter about this, and um, uh, Amelia Womack intervened and said we don't allow in response to my simply showing um screenshots about what Amy Chandler had said and said we don't allow harassment in the Green Party. Two days after that, Amy Chandler went to see a judge to get uh, a hearing for a civil injunction uh, on the basis of harassment that what I was doing by uh, exposing what Amy was saying was harassment. Um, they then, Amy and David Chaloner, uh, hired a car and drove to my house to get me to sign for it in person. Um, so, you, so there was a knock on the door and it was David? A knock on the door, yeah. It, uh, I was laid up with an um, injured foot at the time, so I couldn't answer it. A friend answered the door and uh, it was told there was something for me had to be signed for. And she said, oh, can I sign for it? And she said, no, it has to be him. So I sort of hobbled to the door. I noticed the guy was a bit grumpy, but, you know, I didn't think anything of it. Uh, signed it and it was a, it turned out to be a summons for a, a preliminary court hearing for a civil injunction. Uh, which happened some three weeks later. Okay, so let's let's skip ahead because I think people may not realise how how disturbing it was that this person knocked at your door. Uh, a, a while later, I'm not sure how long you 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 probably know Andy, but a while later, David Chaloner was convicted for uh, torturing a 10, 12 year old girl in her attic. Is that right? Uh, yeah, ten year old. Yeah. It was a year and a half later. I mean, at the time when David came to my door, he was already on police bail um, in uh, November 2016, uh, a few months earlier. He, the police had informed uh, organisations about so what he'd been charged with. He knocked on your door with the summons after Amy Challoner was aware that he had been charged with uh, abusing a young girl in the attic of their home. Is that right? Uh, yeah, well, according to the, um, the Verity report, Coventry Pride were informed, along with other organisations, in November 2016 of the charges that were um, against David. Uh, Amy Chaloner was a trustee at Coventry Pride at the time, would have you know, would have received information from that yeah. direction, if nothing else. So what happened? Uh, uh, how was the it, the months leading up to your court case? I mean, was it weeks or months before you appeared well, in court? It was, I only had uh, three weeks to prepare uh, a statement and send it in. I think I sent the statement back in a week and then two weeks later on the 30th of March, I was in court. Uh, unfortunately, my statement hadn't been received, processed by the court in time. So the judge uh, in the, hadn't actually seen my defence. Let's uh, let's pause there for a second because you're, because the, the trial itself or whatever one would call it, sorry, the procedure uh, was a bit of a farce, wasn't it? Uh, for various reasons. Yes, I guess it, it started before we even went in and the usher came over and said, uh, Mrs. Healy, because uh, <laughs> I've got quite long hair, I guess the judge was knew there was something to do with challenging the case. So I had to explain <laughs> it. Now, despite the long hair, I was in fact uh, a man. A man. <laughs> um, what complicated fact was the judge was blind and couldn't tell which was who Amy spoke first. And um, the judge said, you know, oh, uh, that's Mr. Healy, is it? <laughs> And then, unfortunately, when he found him, the judge was obviously mortified. And from then where on was incredibly obsequious, really, because of yeah. the word for it. I was very much apologetic, I guess. That sort of set the tone for the, for the session, for the really. And um, then you, you, hand, you were able to hand in your statement, which the judge wasn't able to read. Is that right? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, really, there's, there was no way the case really, I don't think, could have gone on at that point. You know, they should have, yeah. they should have stopped to read it. Yeah. Um, uh, but he didn't. And um, David Charner was there uh, with Amy and whispered advice throughout the whole session. Um, Christ, that's disturbing. It, yeah. 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 Um, so it was, I mean, the whole thing was just a bit shocking, I guess, that the fact that, you know, I'd done a very good defence um, and statement. What the strange thing about it, and the judge, you know, despite the fact that the judge was clearly on Amy's side, the judge, there was no evidence, there wasn't enough evidence for a, um, a civil injunction of harassment, you know what I mean? There was, I had yeah. one conversation on Twitter ever with, with, with Amy Chaloner. Um, mm. So the judge uh, told Amy to go away and get more evidence and then mm -hmm. come back for a further hearing, uh, mm -hmm. which technically is still, you know, is still live and waiting to happen. After the trial, did the harassment stop? Uh, what happened with the Green Party as well? Um, well, the, I mean, three things happened at the same time. One, 
Amy started an attempted criminal prosecution, which was investigated separately, uh, which took several months. The police had to go to Coventry for a police interview, and um, fortunately, they were they were clear that it, you know it was did not constitute harassment, and it I eventually they they um, rejected the case and it was finished. Uh, at the same time, um, there was a, a a Green Party a complaint to the Green Party that eventually led to be, being suspended. And how did how did so, how did that procedure happen? It was a long drawn out thing, I guess. I mean, the, the effect of it was that I couldn't attend uh, the next three party conferences, basically having spoken against, been the only person speaking against gender identity motions uh, at the previous two uh, conferences. And uh, mm. it meant mm. I was effectively, uh, although the injunction wasn't awarded, there was enough going on for me to, you know, to be, to feel I had to silence myself really. For yeah, that yeah. Was there, I, I presume around this time they were digging their heels in and and, and circling the wagons around Amy. Uh, when what when it was found out what Amy's uh, father had done, was there any change in their attitude, in the Green Party's um, attitude? Well, I think that's uh, a lot of people were outraged at the Green Party's attitude because uh, it was all about defending Amy and protecting the organisation, basically. And yes. uh, fortunately, though, I mean, a lot of people in the Green Party were shocked, not only at, at what had happened, but that, uh, you know, there were there were lots of us that had, had raised red flags over Amy Chalmers' behaviour over the previous years uh, mm. and had all sort of been silenced individually. Um, a lot of people wanted to know what was going on and, the, and were appalled at the Green Party's. The Green Party did eventually suspend, after a lot of public pressure, suspend Amy Chalmers on a no-blame basis. Um, a no blame basis. What's a no blame basis? Well, uh, I guess quite. It was nothing. I guess it was they wanted to emphasise that they weren't that this was a you know a, a formal thing that had to happen. It just was didn't because they'd all up to that point they'd been emphasising that uh, Amy was the victim. It wasn't. I think there was an attempt to downplay right from the start that David Chandler had had any influence in the Green Party other than signing a piece of paper. Uh, and I think it gradually emerged that, you know, David had been very much more involved in the Green Party or during all the time that he was on bail for the, the charges that he was eventually uh, found guilty of. Uh, and I guess it felt like the party was, it was quite embarrassing for the party to, to admit that. So they ever since then, really, they've tried to downplay um, David's involvement. Yes, I think uh, I, I, ha I had a similar, I had a similar reaction from Stonewall. I was always, whenever, um, uh, I spoke about Stone, uh, Amy Chandler's involvement in Stonewall. It was always, oh, she's not too important, not advising on is on certain issues and so on. But we we don't know that. And Stonewall yeah. have given guidance to schools. Uh, we spoke to Helen Watts recently uh, from the Girl Guides, who um, says that the uh, the policies that have been introduced in girl guiding are are extremely bad for safeguarding. So we don't know how much involvement this child abuser had in Stonewall uh, policies that have that have travelled across the whole country. Uh, indeed, no, and I guess I, I did. I made a contribution. I was invited to contribute to the Verity inquiry, although because of the into the the whole Channel affair, but um, it was deemed my contribution was deemed to be outside the narrow remit. But because I had concrete evidence of how of Amy and David working together. You know, mm. um, uh, it was deemed to be quite, you know, irrelevant really, because it sort of it didn't fit with the what the, the narrative that the Green Party was has been pushing ever since. Really, the problem. Um, another thing that uh, has to be addressed. I remember at the time there was a lot of, uh, oh, don't don't visit the sins of the father on the on the son, and and that's fair enough. But Challoner went on to marry a guy in America who appears to have. Uh, a hobby writing stories about child abuse. Uh, indeed, yes. And Amy was dropped from the Lib Dem role when that was uh, discovered. Um, and and still not dropped from Stonewall. Only dropped from Stonewall again after I wrote my absolutely, piece. absolutely. <laughs> and in fact, was as um, chair of the of the Global Greens LGBT network until very recently, until just a couple of months ago, was still in fact very involved in the Green Party. You know, behind oh, really? the scenes behind wow. the scenes, you know, worldwide. So, you know, although Amy had left in theoretically, was still very active behind the scenes mm. quite recently. Mm. Um, why, why uh, 
are these political parties so enthrall to sometimes dangerous people? Why are they so uh, protective of them? What's going on in your mind? Um, it, it's a good question. It's a good question. I <laughs> guess, um, I, is, it, is it purely the fear of being called transphobic? Is that what? Uh, is if is that what? It, is that what is? I mean, that's uh, that's certainly a big part of it. That's why people don't dare, um, people that disagree with it don't dare to speak out. I guess um, I don't know to extent people people get complicit by going along with something. It's then very hard to step off. And the whole narrative of Amy's being in the party was Amy was a victim, really, and they couldn't really step out of that. There's a way that it seems to be once people identify men particularly identify as trans that they become a different category and have a the way the treated is um is differently i guess the the instincts of everyone was to i don't know it's mm. that the, there'd been i think there'd been a decision beginning of 2015 when uh, rupert reed spoke out about having some problems with the word cis and um, mm. he was a local council at the time and there was an absolute witch hunt uh, against him uh, yes and he had to, um i guess ever since then there was a assumption that this was not to be mentioned again in the party you know that had been decided so um, there was a bit of outrage that it was being brought up um, again, really. So there was a lot of people in the Green Party uh, who who felt that uh, it was more important to avoid the discomfort from that conversation than it was to safeguard children who might come across uh, David Challoner. Um, no political parties are really interested in child safeguarding, really. I, I think... Um, and nobody likes whistleblowers, really. People, <laughs> everybody likes the idea of them, but in practice, people, it's, you know. Yes, you know, yes. You should not blow that whistle now, actually. Is there anything we can do to stop him? Can we make it illegal to blow that whistle? And um, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. I think, in a way, the, the role of, of someone standing up for safeguarding, it, it's, you know, you were talking at the beginning about how you got into trouble, you know, seem to be getting into argument with people, some very dodgy people. Yes. And I think it's, it's in some way, that as, to, to champion safeguarding, you have to be... You have to be blunt and rude. You have to be um, not. You have to think the worst of people, you know. And that's not what we like to do a lot of the time. But somebody mm. has to take that role. And that's very much not what, particularly a green party like the Green Party likes to think. They like to think the best of everybody. Yes. Um, and that's I think a, you know. It's, it's quite great. naive in terms of um, how uh, how um, groomers operate. They they don't seem to realise that groomers operate by by exploiting that very trust um, and that very naivety. Absolutely, and you know, the, there's a lot of a lot of very abusive, bullying people in the Green Party, really, as there are everywhere else, really. Um, mm. It's 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 not it's it's a nice idea, but in a in a safeguarding context, it's um, it doesn't work really. It's, mm. uh, yeah. Yeah. So what's next uh, for you and what's next for the... Well, let's start with you. What's next for you? Are you going to come back to the Green Party and try and help um, from within? Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'm still a member. I'm just temporarily suspended. Um, there, there, was a, there was a huge movement within the Green Party for the change uh, and to, to start looking at some of the but some of the policies that were passed during a period when there was no dissent allowed. Uh, there's been a huge movement um, right. to try and challenge that and the Green Party internal elections are happening at the minute and I guess uh, a lot depends on just how how those internal elections going whether people vote for change or whether people vote for um, to keep things as they were. So maybe if you were disillusioned with the Green Party this week might be a good time to to come back and and try and affect some change from within. Uh, definitely uh, you can if you you've got if you join up till the 31st of January, you can vote in the coming internal elections. Um, there's been a lot of work done, you know, behind the scenes of people working to, to try and um, to reclaim the party and you know, have some to reclaim the idea of debate. So issues can be discussed and what, um, in particular, the issue, the effects on on children and what. I think all basically all the policies need to be re-examined from a safeguarding perspective that were put in over the last few years. Well, I'm I'm glad I'm glad that you're going to be the one, hopefully, going to be back involved in that and doing that. And thank you, um, you know, for your bravery. You know, thank you for speaking out. And and um, and I hope the Green Party regains its senses very soon. Yeah, me too. Thanks. <laughs>
<laughs> Lovely to talk to you, Andy, and I'll see you. Um, I'll see you again sometime. Not on Twitter, but uh, somewhere else <laughs> for a drink or Thanks, something. Sometime. All right. Bye, bye, sir. Thanks, thank you.